Hey there, and welcome back to RimWorld. My name is Pete, and today we complete the third episode of our RimWorld Extreme Desert Naked Brutality Challenge, albeit under somewhat troubling circumstances, but then again, a new video might be exactly the right thing today. Now, in the last episode, we tested out our psychic powers for the first time while hunting donkeys, and with our colonists' stake here, we were able to obtain ourselves some clothing, plant some crops, and build a small shelter. Today, we will make the jump into winter in the desert, which, unless I am mistaken, is actually the time of the year where temperatures are the hottest, so we'll see how steak handles the heat. Before the heat becomes a problem, though, steak gets sick. Yes, it looks like even our Rimworld colonist isn't safe, but instead of the coronavirus, he comes down with gutworms. Now, gut worms are thankfully not a lethal disease, however, in our current situation, they can be incredibly dangerous nonetheless, as they double Steak's hunger rate. So, for the next few days, Steak will have to eat double the usual amount, so even though we currently have a bit of food in storage, he is going to burn through that quickly. The disease is unfortunately also a rather long-lasting one, it needs to be treated multiple times until it finally disappears, and we are actually going to use our herbal medicine for that, as that might help improve the quality of the treatment, and the better that treatment quality is, the quicker we will have beaten the disease. Now, apart from the doubled hunger rate, the disease also causes a significant amount of pain, nothing that will drastically slow Steak down, but it will have a noticeable impact on his mood. So, over the next few days, we should be extra careful to keep that mood as high as possible to avoid risking a mental breakdown. Now, what you can see Steak do at the moment is disassemble a sandstone table because we want to build ourselves some furniture. Twenty-one units of sandstone, however, are not quite enough for what I have planned, so let's dig out a few of the floor tiles here as well. This will give us a bit more than twenty-five units, which is the number we're looking for, because we want to build ourselves a small sandstone stool for our research bench and table. As you can see, we have put both of those closely together, so one stool will be enough to serve as both. And here we are, with a comfort rating of 0.5, it is certainly not the most cozy place in the world, but it is of course much better than doing research standing up. Now, since we have no light source inside of our small shack, we will actually also remove one roof tile above that small stool, so that as long as Steak is sitting on it, he will see some daylight. The rest of the building will remain roofed over, and it will therefore still be considered an enclosed inside space, but with this little trick, he doesn't have to sit around in darkness for the entire day and suffer the corresponding mood penalties. Now that he has a stool, he can even eat at the table, so Steak's quality of life is slowly but steadily improving. And with both stool and research bench in place, I would say it's high time to start researching. There are two projects I think we should get done quickly, and those are stone cutting and complex furniture, as those are pretty much the building blocks of most of our construction projects going forward. And we will start with complex furniture, as it unlocks beds, as well as a few pieces of furniture that improve the comfort rating of beds, and having all of those things in place will definitely improve stake sleep quality, especially if it's compared to a bedroll on the floor. Now, with Steak researching, we can also take a quick look at his stats here and see that research will probably take him quite some time. His intellectual skill is still at zero, but rising somewhat quickly. And especially considering that he's also sick and we will have to take care of food from time to time, I think it will take a few days until we can finally build our first proper bed. Now, after getting some sleep, the next day rolls around and Steak is up early. He is also starving, but a nice meal of berries can temporarily solve that problem. Afterwards, he then takes a brief walk, however one that doesn't quite go without incidents, and so, despite his recreation need now filled, the hunger bar is almost empty again. Instead of the next meal, however, we have some harvesting work waiting for steak, because our small field full of rice is already fully grown. Once again, though, Steak puts his novice gardening skills on display and botches the occasional harvest. In the end, though, we can still celebrate the first batch of food that we have grown ourselves. 
Now, admittedly, 29 units of rice that is just a little more than one filling meal, and with the gut worms that will last at best for half a day, but that is half a day added to our rapidly dwindling food supplies. Now, after re the fields and puking all over it, Stay can return to the research bench, but again, even before he goes to sleep, another meal is necessary, and we are in fact working away at our storage here at alarming speed. The next morning then, after another meal has been consumed, we are left with only 20 berries and 29 units of rice, and with our potato field still taking a few days to mature, we have no other choice but to go trading again. For this purpose, we will have Steak remove his alpaca wool parka, which, like I already mentioned last episode, is not really helping him much in the desert, and we will also once again uninstall the bedroll so that he has a place to sleep on his journey. We will then spend a few more minutes researching here just so that the gut worms can be treated again. And once that is taken care of, we can draw a small stockpile to avoid some hauling work, and then it's time to form the caravan. And we will of course be taking the parka, that one lucky silver we still have, as well as the poor quality steel knife. Then of course we want to take the bedroll, and we also have to bring some berries for the journey. And finally then, we will fill up the rest of his carrying capacity with jade. Our target is of course once again the Black Troska tribe, who hopefully have a bit of excess food that we can purchase. Now, apart from going through the berries in record time, the journey carries out without incident, and so right before it's time to make camp, Stake reaches his destination. Now, for our side of the trade deal, we will of course sell the jade, the knife and the parka for a grand total of 255 silver. That is a pretty decent amount, and after looking through the list and not finding anything else of interest, we are going to spend it all on pemmican. 111 units, that's about 5.5 meals worth. Considering Steak's appetite, it's not going to solve things forever, but it's a good start, I'd say. The first ration is then consumed right here on the spot before Steak goes to sleep, Eventually then, he makes it back to the base around noon, but of the 111 units we just purchased, only 61 are left. So we will probably have to launch the next trade caravan pretty soon, but for the time being, we should have enough food for at least two, maybe even three days. Now after a bit more research, it's time for the next meal, and this time we're having steak eat rice, simply because it doesn't last nearly as long as the pemmican. Once again then, the night passes by without any interruptions, but despite being rested, in the morning we can see Steg's mood decrease even further, as the plus 5 mood bonus from his initial hope has finally expired. And together with being sick, in pain and constantly hungry, the outlook here is definitely not great for Steg. We can only hope that the sickness passes by quickly. Around noon then, with all of the rice eaten up and only 47 units of pemmican left in storage, we have to continue gathering resources for trading. And that is why we're now sending steak over to this vein of gold ore I have found. It doesn't look to be overly huge from the outside, but gold is precious of course and doesn't weigh much, so it makes for a great trading resource. With the first 27 units excavated, we can also treat the gut worms again, but this time the tending quality is a fantastic 0%, so Stake's lack of medical expertise is certainly showing. Still, he continues to work and in the early evening hauls over 50 units of gold back to the base. I think that should once again allow us to purchase a decent amount of food. Later that evening then, after yet another pemmican snack, Stay continues to mine, his skill level is slowly rising and his mining speed therefore increasing. Luckily, he has also brought some pemmican with him, so that he can now have a quick snack before continuing his work. Sadly though, that work doesn't last long at all, as Stake's pain is finally becoming too much to handle and he suffers a mental break. And breaking, that is what he will do now. Breaking things to be exact. Let's just hope he doesn't do too much damage. Oh, 
Alright, for now it looks like Steak is mostly occupied with the outer walls of his cabin. And those can of course be somewhat easily replaced, while I would consider the furniture inside a little more valuable. Okay, looks like our newly constructed stool here is in danger. One or two more hits will be enough to destroy it. And there we go, it's gone. Now, luckily, just a few moments later, the mental break comes to an end. And apart from the stool, nothing else was destroyed. Still, it will probably take a while to clean up the place and repair all the damages. Now, on the bright side, the plus 40 mood bonus from Catharsis should prevent further mental breaks over the next three days. So, even if the gut worms persist, Steak will hopefully remain steadfast. Still, his nightly fit has disrupted his sleep schedule a bit, and so we will unfortunately have to cut his rest short here, because not only does Steak require treatment, he also needs some food, and that means we have to go trading again. So the bedroll is packed, the last bit of pemmican is consumed, and you can see the potatoes are not yet ready for harvest. It is therefore high time to launch another caravan. This time we will be taking the gold, of course the bedroll, and also some lizard skin and plain leather. In their current quantities we can't really do much with them, and even though we might be able to acquire more in the future, for now they're worth enough to be traded. The rest of his carrying capacity will once again be filled up with jade and we'll keep the steel for ourselves for the time being. This allows Steak to travel a little lighter and therefore a little faster. In the evening then, our tired and hungry colonist reaches the Black Troska tribe again. So let us once again have a look at what they have to offer. All of our wares are worth almost 400 silver, but once again we will hold off on buying any other useful items. You just saw how quickly the first batch of pemmican disappeared, so I think the only sensible thing to do here is to stock up on even more. As night rolls around, our tired one-man caravan is then about to make camp, but first we are receiving another quest. Now, turkey sitting here sounds rather interesting, although of course at the moment with our base deserted, we are in no shape to actually accept it. Now, what is being demanded of us here sounds pretty simple, we only have to take care of two turkeys for two days. During that time, however, we will receive constant raids, because apparently the turkeys have offended an outlander union. So those raids will likely involve pistols or other ranged weaponry, simply put, weapons that we currently can't match up with. The reward of two units of Hyperweave is also comparatively meager, but we still want to keep this quest in mind, because we might potentially be able to accept it and then immediately slaughter the turkeys, which, if I'm reading this correctly, should also stop the raids from happening. It would of course fail the quest, but to be honest I'm not too keen on the reward anyway, and who knows, if our food situation continues to be as problematic as it is at the moment, then some turkey meat might provide some much needed relief. So for now we'll keep it in mind and let's stay get some rest. Now interestingly enough, in the morning hours we are then immediately greeted by the next quest, however this one we won't even have to think about. The quest would allow us to house the High Stellarch for 12 days and then escape to the stars, but we have neither the rank to actually accept this quest nor do we have proper accommodation for the Stellarch, so we can safely ignore it for the time being. Now in the meantime, Steak has made it back to his humble abode in the extreme desert, but unfortunately, only seconds after he arrives, so does a tribal raider. We can see him here equipped with absolutely nothing but a limestone club, so we have the range advantage and should hopefully be able to take him. Just seconds after Steak has unloaded his trading inventory, we then also have cargo pots drop down. And even though it's not food inside, the drop is pretty damn valuable nonetheless, as we have just acquired 97 additional units of jade. So that should be enough for two more trading trips, hopefully allowing us to overcome our current food crisis. Speaking of which, with that lone raider still roaming around at the edge of the map, our potatoes are ready to be harvested, so let's have Steak get right to it. The potatoes definitely yield a lot more than rice, so after a quick harvesting session we have 61 units in our storage room. Shortly after then, just as Steak reinstalls his bedroll, that lone tribesman is finally beginning his attack. 
And to keep him at distance, we will once again open things up with a psychic burden. But then, before combat can even really start, we also have a crashed escape pod. So let's have a look at who's inside. Okay, a first look at the clothing here looks solid and so does the skill overview. We are apparently dealing with a very talented craftsman. The only problem is he's dying in 6 hours and we have a raid to take care of first. So I think we won't be able to save him in time. So let us instead worry about our attacker first. Stakes first shot then even connects but the damage is nothing crazy yet. One or two more though and our naked opponent here could be in serious trouble. And there we go, one more hit and we already have our enemy in the process of bleeding out, so now we can safely switch over to hit and run tactics. One more burden ensures that we are not being followed too closely, and with the distance growing too large and stake disappearing out of sight for a moment, the raider even loses interest in him for a brief period of time, so we can safely take aim as our attacker is otherwise occupied. Now, I will spare you several minutes of a rather uninteresting chase around that small mountain here. Suffice it to say, in the end we of course emerge victorious, with our enemy downed but not dead. Would he be wearing any clothes, this would be the time to strip him, but unfortunately he doesn't, so we'll simply leave him to his demise. A quick look at our crashed survivor then reveals we only have 2 hours left to save him. That is likely not going to be enough, so the least we can do is take his clothing. That should fetch us a decent price and with that a few more days with a full belly. With all the items carried into the storage room it is time for one more pemmican meal before steak then goes off to bed and we skip ahead to the next morning. And we begin the day just like we ended the previous one with some more pemmican. And then afterwards it's time to plant more potatoes. Yes, repairs are of course also still needed, but let's take care of those while the potatoes are already growing. We will also slightly expand our field here, I think we have the time to do that. And it will only benefit us in the long run. Then it's time for the repair work and this does in fact take a while. Steak was very thorough in smashing things and so even after several hours of work there is still some left to be done. But of course sleep is important as well so we will give him some rest here which is then interrupted by yet another quest. This one however is one that we're already familiar with from our previous playthrough as we are being notified of the location of an abandoned starship that could take us off this planet. Now if we look at the world map we can see that ship right here near that foresty mountain range. Meanwhile if we're looking for our base in the desert we will have to look at the opposite side of the planet. So the distance we would have to travel to get to the ship is quite large. So this is definitely not a journey that we will undertake anytime soon. Now in the morning we can watch they consume the last bit of pemmican here. So our next trade trip is probably getting closer. That does not mean however that we won't also continue to work on the self-sufficiency front. So after slightly extending our growing zone for potatoes we will now do the same for our rice field. Once all the crops have been planted Steak then also quickly takes care of the remaining repairs. And afterwards it's time for more gold mining. The vein here still has a few valuables to offer and whether we like it or not I think we'll need them soon enough. And with another day in the extreme desert slowly coming to an end, I think it's time to make the cut in today's episode. For the first time in several years, I have actually recorded the audio for this episode in a different environment. As you may have read in that short post I made yesterday, I have temporarily moved back in with my parents. Simply because these days the countryside has a bit more to offer than the city. So I hope you enjoyed the episode and if there were any hiccups in the commentary then I apologize of course. I would hope though that everything is on par with the previous two episodes. So for today let's wrap things up right here. If you liked the episode then I would of course be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up. And if you want to support me and my channel further then you can of course do that as well. Either by subscribing to help the channel grow or by checking out and maybe pledging to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.